I have this crazy story from when I was a park ranger in Alaska. The place is insanely beautiful, just non-stop untouched nature. Summer there is awesome, but winters can be rough. It's really bone-chilling cold there. Back then, I was working at this remote station about two days walk away from where most people lived. Being so cut off can mess with some folks, but I personally liked the quiet. It was deep in winter and everything was covered in fresh snow. It was pretty harsh out there and everyone, including me, had to put in double effort just to get by. I had to check on these traps we set up daily. Aside from the cold, navigating through the rough landscape was equally tough, especially with all the snow. These traps were all over the place, meaning I had to slog through thick forests full of wild animals. You could see signs of animals everywhere, like scratches on trees, crushed bushes, and sometimes even a dead animal. That's just how nature is. It doesn't sugarcoat anything. I can still picture that morning clearly. It was really cold, and ice was all over my truck windows. I started my usual drive, but soon things got weird. I saw some things that were off, but I just thought they were weird coincidences. When you're deep in the woods, normal and weird often become the same thing. It gets pretty hard when the weather is too extreme, but you have to keep going. I wanted to get back to the comfort of the station as soon as possible. I was nearly done with my patrol when I saw a trap that wasn't just triggered but completely destroyed. Most of these traps were meant for bears. They're really strong devices. I've never seen anything like it. The steel parts were ripped like they were just paper. You could see scratches and signs of a fight on the ground, but nothing to show that the thing we caught got away. I quickly looked around and suddenly I smelled something disgusting. It was the gross smell of spoiled meat getting stronger every second. It was clearly bad and quite strange to find in a dead body at these cold temperatures. Anything that's been dead for a while would be frozen here. Something was off and I couldn't quite work out what it was. The air just felt kind of thick and suffocating. I moved away from the gross smell and tried to clear my head. As the day went on, the sickening smell was still there and seemed to get even worse. You know how a dead body smells, right? Well, this was way worse. It was like something dead was being cooked on a slow fire. Now, I'm not really the jumpy type, but something about the woods was just off that day. Even the typical sounds of leaves rustling and birds singing were just gone. It was as if everything was holding its breath. The large trees made scary-looking shadows that made it seem like something bad was hiding there. I walked through the thick snow. The only noise was from my boots. I started feeling uncomfortable. Something just didn't feel right. The wild outdoors that I'd gotten used to over my years of work suddenly started to freak me out, but I couldn't stop. I had to finish my work as fast as I could so I could return to the station. While I was going on, I noticed weird claw marks on the trees around me and odd footprints. I saw these weird footprints, kind of like a mix of a hoof and a human foot. I've seen deer and bear tracks before, but these were like nothing else and way bigger. Plus, there were these odd noises in the air. I couldn't make sense of them, but they sure creeped me out. I got scared by every little sound in the woods, thinking of terrifying stuff. I tried to convince myself it was all in my head, but it felt like someone was watching me. I kept seeing stuff move out of my eyesight like something was hiding in the trees. I was freaked out and just wanted to bolt. I felt like I was facing something straight out of a creepy old legend. I was torn between being scared and doing what I needed to do. I figured I should report what I found and head back to the station. I didn't need to actually see the creature to know those tracks weren't normal. I hadn't come across anything like this in my job before. This was something different. The woods felt different, like it was swallowing up my fears and spitting them back out at me. I've heard plenty of rumors about what leaves hoof prints and stinks like rotting meat. I'm not going to say it, but you can probably guess. People here believe if you say its name out loud, it'll come after you. I still work out there in the wild, and I don't want any issues with this. I've never been as scared as I was that day. That experience and the ongoing doubt have totally changed how I see the Alaskan wilderness. I guess some things are better left untouched. Don't forget... If you end up alone in the wilds of Alaska, keep your head on straight. If you feel like something's watching you, it probably is.
People here tend to be quite superstitious. The area is pretty ancient. These mountains came about when the continents were all in one shape, sort of like a huge island in the middle of the sea. This place has a ton of history. There are some weird stuff deep in the mountains that folks around here try to avoid mentioning. People here are pretty into their superstitions with good reason. Though honestly, a lot of it is just old ghost stories used to scare kids so they don't wander off too far into the woods. Many of these stories are from when children could freely hang out in their neighborhood all day and had to be home by nightfall. There wasn't much to worry about, but sometimes those creepy tales are true. In some scary places in the world, there really are monsters. I first met them about 35 years ago when I was just nine. Back then, I lived in a small trailer with my mom on the outskirts of town. Our place was right where the city ended and the countryside began. I could walk to some of my friends' houses in the summer, but it worried my mom because I'd have to walk on a road where cars could go up to 55 miles per hour. Otherwise, to go into town, I'd shortcut through my neighbor's yard and hike a mile through some woods. I'd cross railroad tracks and go past an old, unused church. Back then, everyone in town used to say the church was haunted. They believed that demons came out at night and messed with anyone who got close. They were supposed to be so strong that no priest in the area could remove them. They even tried an exorcist once, but word is he ran out of there scared. Sure, those were just tales. The actual thing was way worse. I bumped into it on a late August summer night. It was almost pitch black, and I left my buddy's house aiming to get home. My mom always told me to stick to the road when it was nighttime and to stay away from that old church. She never mentioned why or about any spooky stories. But one night, I was running late and didn't want to get grounded, so I decided to cut through the woods. I thought I'd be okay since I knew the way really well. I remember going into the woods and hearing all these night sounds. The wind in the trees, frogs making noises and cricket sounds, and there were fireflies lighting up the whole place. I felt like I was in some magical forest. Just a few minutes from the church, suddenly everything became quiet. No sounds of frogs or crickets. The wind stopped and it got really still. All the fireflies were gone too. I knew something wasn't right, so I started to walk faster to get out of there. I heard some noises coming from inside the church. It seemed like whatever it was had claws or sharp nails scratching against the walls. I really didn't want to imagine what it was. I was hoping it'd be a raccoon or something, but somehow I just knew it wasn't. Then I saw eyes looking out the window. I was about to run, but then I heard my mom calling me. Her voice was coming from inside the church. I looked back and she was calling me again. Then she asked me for help, wanted me to go into the church. Even though it sounded like my mom, I knew it wasn't her. She wouldn't ask me to go there, especially after she specifically told me not to. I felt something was wrong when I was nine, but couldn't understand what was happening. I shouted, Mom, but got no reply. Still, I could hear noises from the church. I heard something moving around. Then after what felt like forever, the door slowly opened. There was this pale, human-shaped thing in the doorway. It was down on all fours. It was pale and bald with big yellow eyes. Its skin didn't look right and its eyes were really deep set. I couldn't even see a nose. From far off, its face kind of resembled a bare skull. It stared at me and said my name in my mom's voice. I got scared and bolted for home. I was so fast that I didn't even look back to see if it was following me. I haven't been near that ancient church since then, and I never go out at night without a flashlight and a knife, even now. Honestly, I don't like being outside when it's dark. I didn't start sharing my experience until I was in my 20s. I was just too afraid. I worried that people wouldn't believe me, and the fear of possibly encountering it again if I spoke up scared me even more. Talking about them didn't make them real or bring them closer like I thought it would. But after bugging some of the older people in town, I finally figured it out. Sort of. They're called Earth Dwellers. Some folks believe they've been around longer than the mountains. It has a name, but you're not supposed to say it out loud saying it can bring you really bad luck. These animals might have existed during the dinosaur age, but they looked different. 
They can imitate sounds, voices, and even shapes, though not perfectly. That's what all the stories say. People who've heard their loved ones call out their name from the woods knew something was off. Could be the tone or the way they said it, but something didn't feel right, and people can feel it. These things try to copy their target's appearance. They try to look like us, but can only pull off looking like monsters. If they were better at it, we'd probably be in more trouble. I really don't know what they'd do if they caught someone, but I bet it wouldn't be nice. So, something wild happened when me and my high school buddies were making a film project. I thought you might want to hear this because it's kind of related to your channel. We were making a short horror movie that we filmed in the Pine Barrens in New Jersey. I've been to that place a couple of times when I was younger and it always felt spooky. There were some local scary stories about it, but we just wanted a creepy forest to shoot our short movie in. We didn't really expect to find anything weird there. This happened in the spring term of my third year in college. I had a class where we had to create short films for part of our finals. My group and I chose to do a horror film. We thought of several places, but in the end we decided on Pine Barrens. I was the one directing it. Brian and Mark were on camera, while Abby handled the sound with this vintage mic we found in the school's AV room. We had a great time all day, hunting for the perfect filming spots, shooting scenes, and really getting into the mood of creating an awesome horror movie. We also had some fun incorporating local legends in the plot. We heard some spooky tales about the place, but the Jersey Devil story caught our eye for our amateur movie. We looked up some information locally and even interviewed people. Surprisingly, some folks actually believed in it. They were convinced this creature was real. I thought they were just messing with the naive film kids in town. But the way they talked about it unsettled me. We had a few scenes that needed shooting in the dark. We needed to check the cameras and the lights, so we went out to the Barrens. When it got dark, the woods just didn't feel the same. The place felt creepy and scary. I don't usually get scared, but being in those quiet woods was kind of disturbing. The sound of breaking twigs or rustling leaves seemed really loud in the dark. Any little sound made us turn around, our hearts beating fast. Well, we wanted a certain vibe, didn't we? As the night went on, we ended up with some decent shots. Even though things felt kind of spooky, we were having fun with it. We were about to wrap up after one last scene, but then everything went sideways. Well, everyone knows the Pine Barrens has its share of weird stuff. But one thing's experiencing it yourself. Something felt really wrong. I couldn't see anything out of the ordinary, but I could definitely feel it. I had this feeling like something was about to go down. It wasn't just me. We all felt it. We were already cleaning up, but everyone was hurrying a bit more now. We tried to ignore the creepy feeling, telling ourselves that the sounds of the old squeaky trees and the low hooting of an owl somewhere was just typical forest noise. Totally normal. You don't need to worry about anything. But sometimes, when it's dark at night, real scary things can hide in those hidden parts of the world. Out of nowhere, a sound came from the thick bushes behind us. It was so startling we all just stopped. It was kind of like a scream or maybe a yell. It's tricky to describe as I've never heard anything like that before or after. I was in the woods, trying to find what made that sound when I saw a big shadow moving across the sky in the moonlight. It was huge, way bigger than any bird in the Pine Barrens, and there was this weird smell, like sulfur, it came with it. It was so intense that our eyes started watering. When it flew lower, we could see it better. It was definitely what people around here call the Jersey Devil. I'm not totally sure what it was, but I know it's what everyone's been talking about. It looked like it had its bones on the outside, kind of like an exoskeleton. They were really dark, nearly black and shiny in the moonlight. It was about the size of a deer or horse with split hooves. Its face was weird. It had a long snout, but I couldn't really relate it to any animal I know. It had two big black horns on its head and wings on its back. It kind of looked like a demon. We didn't get attacked by it or anything. Yet just being there and thinking it could jump on us any moment was scary enough. We couldn't move at all, even if it was probably just a couple of seconds. I was struggling to believe what I was seeing. It was hard to accept. Creatures like this weren't real. 
They were things you'd only see in a movie. It's not real, you know. We all agreed to take off at the same time. Packing was a chaotic mess. Why worry about cameras and stuff when we were just trying to save ourselves? Somehow, even though we were freaking out, we managed to stumble back to the car. We didn't look back till we were safely inside. When we finally looked, it had disappeared. I can't tell if it tried to follow us or not. The sky looked normal and the woods seemed quiet. Did we just... Brian began asking, but no one could finish his sentence. We haven't gone back to Pine Barren since that night. The movie? Yeah, we finished it with the footage we had. We didn't go back for any extra shots. The whole thing felt kind of personal, you know, so we didn't put it on the internet or include it in the final cut. But it kind of changed us. When we first started writing the script, we included a line, reality is scarier than fiction. We didn't realize then how accurate this would end up being. So I have a crazy story for you. It really scared me and I've seen some things in Afghanistan. Last summer, my wife and I thought we'd take a weekend trip to the Smoky Mountains. You see, Rita and I are really into nature. Both of us were raised with mountains practically in our backyards, away from the city buzz. We knew about all sorts of animals nearby, but we've learned that everything isn't always what it looks like. Seriously, there's so much more to nature than what most people realize. We were really excited for this trip. Just us, the wild, a clear sky in the Smoky Mountains, couldn't ask for better company. We set up camp near a hiking trail since we planned on doing some easy walks the next day. Rita cooked up some great chili and beans on the campfire. I mean, food always tastes better outdoors, right? After we ate, we got our camp ready for the night. We knew that where we were hiking had many black bears, so we had to store our food properly. The day was really nice. You could see why they call them the Smokies. The view was so hazy, it was like a dream. We hung out by the fire before deciding to go to bed early. After heading into the tent, it got really quiet. It was pretty chilly, but peaceful. Yet it was oddly too quiet. So, you know how sounds in the wild often mix together? Kind of like natural white noise? For some reason, it was oddly quiet that night. You ever get that weird sensation where something doesn't feel right, but you can't exactly pinpoint what? That's exactly what I was feeling. It felt like the night was expecting something to happen. Rita said she felt it too, and I could tell by her look. The moonlight was kind of playing hide-and-seek, making the shadows of the trees move around. We spoke softly, almost like we were scared to break the silence of the night. Out of nowhere, a low, deep sound came from the darkness past our campsite. It was loud and echoing, cutting through the silence like a sharp knife. To be honest, it was really freaky. Rita grabbed my arm hard, her fingers digging through my shirt. Then we heard it again. It was close, loud, like a rough growl echoing in the silence. And then we heard it again. It seemed like the noise was coming from everywhere. Were we being surrounded by just one animal or multiple at our campsite? Every growl could be heard clearly in the quiet. I couldn't tell if the sounds were from a wolf, a bear, or any animal I knew. You could say we were freaking out. We didn't sleep at all that night, just stuck in our sleeping bags, our hearts pounding together every time we heard a weird noise. I really wished it was just a nightmare. But there was no denying it. We were really scared. We were hoping it had become morning so we could deal with whatever was out there. Then we felt weird. Something made us both look at the tent flap that was still kind of open. I could tell Rita also saw what I saw. Two bright spots, like burning coal, were visible in the dark not too far from our tent. They were this weird red-orange color in the dark. They were definitely eyes, and honestly, I was really scared. Then more eyes showed up, and they looked just as creepy as the first ones. Those growls we heard earlier got louder and scarier when we realized these weren't just your average predators. I noticed a really nasty, stinky smell, something like burnt meat mixed with sulfur. It just didn't belong in the woods. This weird smell really got to me. I pushed past my fear because of the rush of adrenaline. I suddenly got up, 
unzipped the bag and began shoving all our things inside. Rita did the same thing quickly. You could tell we were freaked out as the fire was going out and those eerie howling noises wouldn't stop. As soon as we packed what we could, we took off. We sprinted like mad and I bet our lives were on the line. We didn't stop till we got to our car. The ride home didn't involve much talking. Seeing the wild turn into city again, well, it was a relief that we just couldn't put into words. We got home as dawn was breaking, worn out, rattled, but relieved we made it out of there without a scratch. We spent days trying to make sense of what happened that night. We went over every single detail, trying to find anything that could make it seem normal. But every time we ended up at the same spooky conclusion. Those were no normal wild animals. That experience really freaked us out and now we're not so keen on camping anymore. We often tell this story like our own personal ghost experience. Only we know how real it was, how it scared us and how we still sleep with the lights on, half expecting to hear those growls again some quiet night. Hey, I've got a weird story to tell you. Some years back, I went to visit this old place called Benton Mansion. It's an old historic spot in Virginia's countryside. Before going there, I only knew about it from my history books and old black and white photo, but I was always very interested in the stories and history about this place. These stories about luxury, excess, and love also had a sad vibe of backstabbing and loss. But what really got to me were the ghost sightings. It was a great day to check out the mansion. The sun was out and the sky was blue. I took my camera, ready to capture all the history around me. I was really impressed by how well the old architecture was kept. The intricate Victorian designs were stunning and the place was all peaceful and quiet. It kind of blew me away. I'm not really into history, but there was something cool about knowing that I was stepping into a place that's seen tons of stuff over the years. As I walked around, seeing all the fancy rooms and the old dusty smells, I could just about hear the sound of all these old-timey women chatting away and faint piano music from somewhere. The place was pretty impressive, and the light coming through the old curtains made patterns on the floor that made me feel like I was back in the past. I spent some time reading the info signs, trying to picture the kind of people who used to live in this huge house. Running my hands over the cool counters, checking out the fancy trim, I was chilling and enjoying every bit of it. No city stress, no rush. But then, I got this feeling that I wasn't totally alone as I first thought. Weird, right? As soon as I got there, I had this weird feeling that someone was watching me. I thought I was just imagining things, but I couldn't shake it off. At first, it was just a small, odd feeling, like pins and needles at the back of my neck. I tried to ignore it, but then something seemed to change. It felt really awkward and unsettling. I kept looking over my shoulder, thinking someone was there, but no one ever was. I often felt cold breezes. I would stop and think it was just a drafty house, but it had happened even in rooms without windows. Weird, I thought but it didn't stop me from checking it out further. I could smell something too. It was so faint that I wasn't sure if it was real or just in my head. It was a perfume, but an old one, like from a long time ago. It didn't seem to fit the old dusty place, but I could still smell it from time to time. I kept looking around for where it was coming from, but never found anything. Then you could hear some whispers, really faint like they were coming from far, They'd get louder then fade out, almost like someone was messing with the sound level on a TV. I couldn't really tell anything about the voice, but it gave me the creeps, so I kept going. I was half curious, half showing off going around the place taking pictures, trying to get the vibe of the mansion. Something felt off, but I couldn't see anything weird happening. I really liked this little room with cute mini tea sets and a kid's tricycle. But man, it was freezing in there, like totally caught me off guard. Even weirder, I felt really down for no reason. Then out of nowhere, I saw something from the corner of my eye. I saw a quick reflection on the curio cabinet, and then there was this moving sound like a soft whisper. It gave me the chills and my stomach was in knots. But when I turned around to face the cabinet, there was nothing in the reflection. That experience really freaked me out. 
I got goosebumps and shivered, even though the room wasn't cold. I was struck with a mix of awe and fear. I didn't really see much, it was more about how I felt. It was weird, like I was dealing with something that I just couldn't understand, something way beyond any of us. I decided I'd seen enough and left the mansion earlier than I thought I would. You can tell it really got to me because I kept looking back at it in my rear mirror as it got smaller and smaller. I can't put my finger on it, but I'm sure there was something else in there with me that day. Something weird happened to me back in 2008. I bought a home that needed a lot of repairs close to a military base. If you looked hard enough, you could see the antennas from my porch. I moved there mostly for the peace and quiet. To tell it like it is, there's always some sort of noise, but I don't really notice it. I enjoy being alone, plus the rent is cheap. It lets me put more time into my hobbies. At that time, I got into ham radios. I was sort of hooked on this idea of tuning into signals and overhearing chats. It's kind of like fishing, but instead of fish, I'm pulling out unique frequencies and cool talks from the air. You can hear all sorts on there, truckers moaning about traffic, old-timers remembering the good old days of rock and roll. You name it, it's on there. I thought with the military base and all the traffic around, I'd hear some interesting chats. My buddy Eddie got me a good radio. He even gave me an old frequency guide he had. After I set up the ham radio, I started hanging out on the back porch in the evenings, holding the radio in one hand and a beer in the other. I would constantly flip through the radio channels, noting down any odd or interesting signals. Sometimes I'd pick up bits and pieces from the nearby base. It was generally boring stuff like dispatch codes or radio checks. Nothing out of the ordinary. Even if it seemed normal, it was still really interesting. There was always some sort of thrill in it. It was full of mysterious names and codes that I couldn't entirely understand. After I had been into this hobby for a few weeks, I started noticing this strange frequency. It was pretty late, like 11-ish, and I was just flipping through radio stations like any other night. Then all of a sudden I hit this weird channel. The radio went super loud and there was this crazy static noise. It freaked me out so much I almost dropped my beer trying to lower the volume. I wasn't sure what was going on. It had been a pretty quiet night at the base, then suddenly my ham radio went nuts. It was on a frequency I hadn't heard of. I went through everything twice, even used Eddie's old frequency guide. Nothing. It felt like it just came out of nowhere. At first I thought it was a mess up or some new type of secret military code maybe, but I was wrong. I just wished I knew how off I was. So I'm sitting there, completely lost, trying to get a grip on the situation. The sound from the radio was plain creepy. It was like some kind of robotic whale song with high and low notes mixed up with some static noise. My heart was pounding. I had heard about number stations and secret military channels, but this was something else. It only happened for three minutes, but it felt way longer while I was hearing it. I continued looking out into the darkness beyond my back porch, almost as if I was hoping to actually see where this sound was coming from up in the sky. I was trying to work out if this was some kind of message or just a weird broadcast from an unknown frequency, or perhaps my radio was just acting up. I found myself trying hard to catch some hidden message or pattern in the static and strange noise. But guess what? It gets even weirder. So. There I was, totally confused by this new frequency, when I looked out and saw something. Above the shadows of the trees, there was this glowing thing. It started small like a star, but got bigger and brighter the more I looked. Truth is, I didn't get what was happening right away. When I looked from the sky to my radio, still playing that weird frequency, it dawned on me. I nearly burst out laughing. A UFO and a strange frequency in one night? No way. This thing, whatever it was, must have been messing with my radio. It was just floating up there in the sky like it was tied to the ground or something. There wasn't any sound, totally quiet, just some weird buzzing noise coming from the radio. I got goosebumps. The sky was clear except for this one thing shining oddly. It was still for a bit and then it moved in really weird ways, darting and then it was just gone. I stayed out on my porch all night playing around with my ham radio, but I couldn't catch that signal again. 
When I managed to talk to Eddie about it, he thought it was just fighter jets from the base. But honestly, I'd never seen anything like that before and haven't since. What do you reckon? Some sort of secret military stuff? Did some pilots play a prank at midnight or did I find something alien? I won't forget that night quickly. It made my late night radio time more fun, but also a bit creepy. I've been waiting to catch that radio signal again, but so far nothing. It's been totally quiet both on the radio and outside.